Historic criminal trial of Donald Trump. It's going into the second day of jury selection. Former president was in the courtroom for the entire day as nearly 100 potential jurors filed in. Most of them indicated that they could not be impartial and were dismissed. Aaron Katursky starts us off at the courthouse in downtown Manhattan. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, George. Former President Trump arrived here a short while ago with a small wave. No protesters or supporters here to greet him. Headed up to the 15th floor where the history of a former president being on trial is contrasting with the slow, laborious process of finding a jury to sit in judgment. This morning, Donald Trump returns to the courtroom where lawyers are winnowing the pool of New Yorkers to find 12 jurors and six alternates to hear the case charging the former president with falsifying business records to conceal stories about his sex life from voters before the 2016 election. Trump using a platform no other criminal defendant has, a microphone in the hallway. Nothing like this has ever happened before. It's never been anything like it. Once seated in court, Trump was stern-faced. He craned his neck to eye prospective jurors and flashed a tight-lipped smile, one woman giggling in recognition of who was seated at the defense table. The judge asking if they knew potential witnesses, a who's who of the Trump family, campaign, and administration. Melania Trump, Ivanka Trump, Rudy Giuliani, Hope Hicks, Michael Cohen. The judge then saying, raise your hand if you believe you cannot be fair and impartial. More than half of the first batch of 96 potential jurors raised their hand and were immediately dismissed. In the hallway, one heard saying, I just couldn't do it. A cross-section of New Yorkers, an oncology nurse, a bookseller, a salesman originally from Ireland, answered questions one by one. A woman who works in retail sent home after saying she had strong opinions about Trump that would interfere with her ability to be a fair and impartial juror. Politics was always going to run headlong into this trial, and on the very first day, Trump found out how restrictive that can be. He asked permission to skip next Thursday so he can attend U.S. Supreme Court arguments over his presidential immunity claim. The judge said no. Arguing before the Supreme Court is a big deal, the judge said, but having a trial in New York County Supreme Court with a jury of 12 and perhaps six alternates, that is also a big deal. He needs to be present. Trump also asking to skip court the day his son Barron graduates from high school. The judge said, depends on how we are doing on time. It looks like the judge isn't going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. Prosecutors are already asking the judge to hold Trump in contempt over recent social media posts that they said violated the judge's gag order prohibiting Trump from attacking witnesses like Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. Defense attorneys said, George, that he was only responding to attacks from them, but prosecutors want a $3,000 fine. Okay, Aaron, thanks very much. It's our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl. Dan, let me begin with you. So we saw many of the potential jurors dismissed. How difficult is it going to be to put a jury together here? Very. I mean, look, these were the jurors who were honest, right? They came forward and said, I can't be impartial. The concern has got to be about the other half, the ones who are saying, oh, yeah, I could be totally impartial in this case. So this is going to be a process where initially it's the jurors self-selecting, right? It's the jurors saying, this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. After that, the lawyers are going to begin the process of questioning them. Each side gets an opportunity uh, to eliminate some uh, without reason. And then beyond that, they'll have to make an argument to the judge for what the reason would be to dismiss them. John, we've been talking about the political and legal calendars clashing for about a year. Yeah. Yesterday, it became real. And it felt like the dynamic may be changing from what we saw earlier when Donald Trump was so convinced that this was helping him every day. Yeah, I could see it in his behavior, in his demeanor. This was a wake-up call for Donald Trump. This is his new reality. He is now criminal defendant Trump. Sure, he's been indicted four times. He's had to go to his, indict, he's good to go to his arraignments. But now he has to be inside a nondescript courtroom in lower Manhattan, Day after day, against his will, he must be there, and he is in a courtroom where he has no control. The judge is the boss, and for the most part, he has to be silent. You could see the bitterness, the anger, I think the, the energy drained from him when he walked out of that courtroom at the end of the day. That was a different Donald Trump, and look, he was restrained yesterday. He didn't violate the gag order. He didn't lash out at anybody, but how is this going to affect his psyche and his behavior as he does this for the next 
roughly two months. And what is he going to say as the witness? Is it once the jury is picked, as the witnesses start to testify? Dan, we already saw the prosecutor say he's violated the gag order three times. He's going to have to be careful when he goes out to those microphones. Absolutely. Look, I'm surprised that the judge is even giving uh, the defense team a week or whatever to file a written response to this. Typically, you would deal with this immediately, which brings up another issue, which is this judge has been pretty fair to Donald Trump. I mean, he keeps talking about how unfair. No access Hollywood tape. Right. No access Hollywood tape. No eight other women who uh, made allegations against Donald Trump going to be admitted in this case. The judge giving him this time to respond to the gag order, etc. All of this undermines the argument that this is a judge who is so hopelessly unfair that he can't give Donald Trump a but fair the, trial. But the biggest victory his legal team had yesterday was over their own client. He walked by those cameras, I believe it was four times, where he didn't say anything. And even when he went before the cameras, he didn't lash out. He didn't violate a gag order.